If you're a fan of action movies, there's a chance you encountered Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan. There's a movie and a series in the franchise, so what order does it go in? Well, come join me as I explain the entire Jack Ryan timeline. I kid you not when I tell you that the Jack Ryan franchise spanned decades. Along with it, five actors have taken the iconic role, with the latest being The Office star John Krasinski. But this iconic character was first introduced way back in 1984 in Tom Clancy's The Hunt for Red October's novel. The character got so big that he ended up appearing in 21 of Clancy's books. You know who else took notice of his growing popularity? Hollywood. It was only a matter of time for a live adaptation to get going, but it seems like they just can't nail the perfect Jack Ryan, despite the vast source material. So we're stuck with a couple of reboots because of that. But anywho. Shadow Recruit is the first in Jack Ryan's timeline, where we cover Jack's early days. The 2014 film starring Chris Pine explores Jack's early days as an undercover CIA operative. Even with Chris Pine's stellar acting and good looks, unfortunately the movie bombed in theaters. What's worse is that it got demoted as just another CIA operative action trope, but do give it a try though. Along with Chris Pine, he's joined by Kira Knightley, Kevin Costner, and Kenneth Branagh. I still think it's worth a watch, especially if you're hell-bent on following the Jack Ryan series. Though I have to say, it's a bit weird to launch the origins of the character, especially since it's been around 1984. Huh. Now here's where it gets tricky. Although we did say that Shadow Recruit deals with the origins, so does Amazon's Jack Ryan TV series, starring John Krasinski. Since Shadow Recruit was a flop, Amazon wanted to have a go and see if they could do a Jack Ryan adaptation better, and this time in series form. And in fairness to them, they did one heck of a job. This time, the timeline goes way back before Shadow Recruit. Now in this series, we learn about the accident and see the man's upgrade from a boring desk job to a field operative. As for the storyline, well, just like any other Tom Clancy story, Jack's here to save the world. And the threat? Just an Islamic terrorist, Musa bin Suleiman, who plans to infect the whole US with the deadly Ebola virus. If you think this sounds familiar, well, it's because it's derived from one of Tom Clancy's works, Executive Order. Of course, Jack pulled up and saved the world, along with making up with his girlfriend Kathy Mueller, played by Abby Cornish. Compared to Shadow Recruit, the series does a better job, and yeah, sure, it had a few shortcomings, but you've got to admit, this is definitely a glow up. Mark Anthony. Damien Pete, Mark Anthony. And you, my friend, where are you from? Don't worry about where I'm from. All right, last chance. Tell me the truth. The truth. And more specifically, you, Dr. Ryan, seem intent of pinning the assassination of Senator Moreno on me despite the fact that I brought the real killer to justice. Actually, you didn't. The man who shot Senator Moreno, his name is Max Schenkel, and he was killed in London yesterday. So either you've imprisoned innocent men by mistake. Following the Jack Ryan series is the sum of all fears. Not only does this adaptation go a few years back, but we also get a different Jack Ryan. This time it's Ben Affleck. We once again have an origin story for our hero, this time played by a young Ben Affleck. It makes sense to slot the sum of all fears between the first two seasons of Jack Ryan if one were trying to watch this saga in order. But between you and me, I think they've covered too many origin stories for a few years now. Anyway, back to Jack Ryan. In the sum of all fears, Jack fights to prevent a conflict between the United States and Russia from breaking out when some neo use a nuclear weapon to destroy the Super Bowl stadium. The Super Bowl stadium. Like, it can't get any more patriotic than that, huh? Now, before using his wits to dissuade the President of the United States from bombing Russia in reprisal, our man engages in unusual action and even embarks on a journey with a young John Clark, played here by Lee Schreiber. The series came to terms on its own, however, it fizzled out pretty quickly, not to mention that the storyline fell short. But wait, if you think we forgot, there's another Jack Ryan adaptation and it's the granddaddy of the Jack Ryan franchise. It's none other than The Hunt for Red October, with Alec Baldwin playing the role. Just to clarify, the movies and TV shows we mentioned are not listed in the same sequence that the Jack Ryan movies and television series were shown. For example, The Sum of All Fears came out in 2002, but The Hunt for Red October was technically the first Jack Ryan movie ever made, released in 1990. 
The main emphasis of Red October's plot is Marco Ramius, the submarine's commanding officer, and his attempts to defect the United States. Alec Baldwin's Jack Ryan tries to persuade Washington of Ramius's intentions, though we have to admit there's not much room given to explore his personal life. Now, compared to the Jack Ryan films we listed, The Hunt for Red October is kind of a standalone. Instead of trying to start a franchise, it wants to tell its own special narrative. The results are definitely exciting, and we regret that the production team didn't come back for more. And now, we both jump forward and backward in time with the last Jack Ryan Patriot Games, led by none other than Harrison Ford. So what I meant by jumping back in time is that this film was released way back in 1992, but, but, get this, Jack Ryan is now 50 years old, so it's a time skip. For better or worse, Harrison Ford's portrayal of Jack Ryan delivered something completely different. The second Ryan movie, Patriot Games, features a much older Jack Ryan who has long since left the CIA. However, Sally is only a few years older and is now played by Thora Birch, and Kathy Ryan is now played by Ann Archer. James Earl Jones, who previously played Admiral James Greer in Red October, returns to the scene, further complicating matters. So yeah, this is the part where the Jack Ryan universe overlaps one another. Now you may be asking, is Alec Baldwin not available? Why not him? According to Alec Baldwin himself, he was virtually passed up in favor of Harrison Ford, who was considered more bankable in the early 90s. Poor guy just got ditched right then and there. But we gotta say, Harrison Ford's performance as Jack Ryan in this movie is just downright mwah. Back to Patriot Games plot, we have Jack Ryan enjoying life as a professor at the United States Naval Academy after he retires from the CIA. And in typical Jack Ryan fashion, he prevents a plot by a dissident IRA faction to attack the Queen's cousin when he is giving a lecture in London. In the confusion, terrorist Sean Miller is apprehended and Ryan kills his brother by shooting him. So yep, you guessed it right. It's a typical vengeance movie. So now, Miller vows vengeance, escapes from jail, and goes after Ryan's expectant wife and daughter. And we all know how that went down. Jack Ryan managed to save the day. This brings us to the final Jack Ryan entry in the series, Clear and Present Danger. Even though they continue to be distinctly standalone films, Patriot Games and Clear and Present Danger are still the only two installments in the Jack Ryan series that go hand in hand. For instance, in Clear and Present Danger, we find that Jack and Kathy had a son between movies, whom they named Jack Jr., continuing a plot line from Patriot Games, which was left unresolved. So there you have it, the entire Jack Ryan timeline explained.